Picture this, a barren desert, not a living thing for miles around, save a few dry bushes dotting the parched dirt. Here, a mere ten inches of rain fall every year. Suddenly, you see a tree, knobby, with branches twisting and turning into a network of twigs and green leaves dotting the top of the cluster. This tree thrives in this climate. Its smell is exotic and overwhelming, like honey and smoked wood, with a hint of lemon and fruits. The only thing this mystical tree could be is, of course, a frankincense tree. Frankincense is made from the resin of trees in the Boswellia genus, most commonly Boswellia sacra, serrata, neglecta, carteri, and papyrifera, although there are a lot of other species. These species of frankincense trees are more or less the same, except for a few evolutionary differences that help them thrive in their environments. To collect the resin, farmers slash the barks of the frankincense trees and wait for a couple weeks for the resin to seep out. They collect it, then process it by cutting the resin into chunks or distilling it into essential oils. Frankincense can then be used in other products such as incense sticks and powders. Frankincense thrives in desert and dry woodland biomes. In overwhelming amounts of all the world's frankincense trees are grown in the Horn of Africa, most commonly in Oman, surrounding the Gulf of Aden. This southern Arabian region has been the epicenter of frankincense trade since the beginning of its popularity, where more than 82% of global frankincense comes from. Most of the remaining production comes from the species Boswellia serrata, native to certain parts of India. Frankincense was first widely used by the Egyptians in 1400 BC, and was believed to create a pathway for the souls of the dead to journey to heaven through its smoke. Around 1100 BC, the camel was domesticated. Now, camels are extremely well suited for travel, especially in desert where there is little to no water. Before, donkeys were mainly used to trade frankincense, restricting transport to the nearby African coast. Camels made it possible to travel across the vast Arabian desert, a place previously uncrossable with the donkey. Frankincense, by then a multi-continental trade, was adopted as a sacred incense by the Christian religion. Its importance is documented 117 times in the Christian Bible. The most famous story is when the three wise men gift frankincense, along with mirror and gold, to baby Jesus. In 480 Rome, one pound of frankincense costed the entire monthly salary of a commoner at the time. These days, however, you can buy frankincense for just over $10 off of Amazon. Nowadays, people use it for cosmetic purposes, either as a perfume or an essential oil. Even though frankincense has been used throughout history for its medicinal properties, is any of this true? Recent studies have shown frankincense to have anti-inflammatory effects, which is on par with the claims of ancient healers. The reason humans have inflammatory health problems is because of the 5-epoxygenase, or 5-LO, enzyme, and leukotriene B4, or LTB4. Frankincense is made up of boswellic acid, a terpene that specifically targets these 5-LO enzymes and LTB4s by inhibiting its movement. Frankincense trees have evolved to contain boswellic acid because this compound also can be used by the tree to deter herbivores from eating them and to attract herbivore harming parasites and insects. It seems the outlandish claims on frankincense does have some truth to it. But what's more, frankincense has been proven to have certain antidepressant properties by stimulating your brain's opioid receptors. Recent studies conducted on mice show that incensile acetate, or IA, acts on something called the transient receptor potential vanilloid, or TRPV3. It's an ion channel found in the neurons in your brain. Apparently, IA affects the brain through these ion channels, causing antidepressant effects, including a decrease in nervousness and a boost in confidence. While the exact role of TRPV3 is unknown, studies show that they have something to do with your brain's emotional regulation, controlling your feelings. Frankincense has many health benefits. I wonder if these health benefits, specifically the psychological ones, were a contributing factor to the widespread use of frankincense in Christian churches. Did the churches know that frankincense has effects on the mind that might aid in meditation and prayers during religious ceremonies? At the time, frankincense had already been in use for over a thousand years. Don't you think people would have noticed these effects by then? 
To be sure, there were many other factors that could have made frankincense into a sacred incense. The fact that Rome, the largest Catholic empire in history, was easily accessible from Oman, the largest producer of frankincense at the time, could have influenced its holy reputation. But given the evidence that frankincense can reduce nervousness, stress, and depression, which was no doubt beneficial in prayers and meditation at church, the priest at the time would have surely noticed this. Here is a loopy showing how frankincense could have been adopted by Christians. Loopy is an online tool that you can use to show systems and how different nodes or parts of a system can interact with each other. As frankincense trade increases over time, frankincense use also increases, decreasing health issues such as forgetfulness, lethargy, and physical health problems. As more churches notice this, the more it is used in Christian ceremonies. The more churches that use and buy frankincense, the more frankincense is produced, processed, and traded, starting the cycle over again. The history of frankincense dates back to the Egyptians, more than 2,000 years ago. People have used frankincense since the beginning of its trade, first for its health benefits and then as a sacred incense. The fact that modern science is now agreeing with many ancient beliefs of the properties of frankincense makes you think, what other undiscovered and ancient plants have amazing healing powers?